What is up, Rat Potential? Welcome to today's video on the Weber Carb. So, finally got some bits in the mail, excuse me, that I had been waiting on for quite a while. Not really waiting on for quite a while, but just a few days last week. So, this is called a choke tube, or venturi, or whatever you want to call it. It's a choke tube. So these are 42 mil, they go in the 50, you can see how thick they are. We're going to go up to the car, we're going to pop the old ones out, we're going to put these in. So the thing that might get a little tricky about these is that they're kind of hard, or can be kind of hard to slide out of the carb, because um, they fit really tight, So because you don't want air like going around the outside of them. So hopefully we can get them all out in a reasonable time. All right, so if you look down in the carburetor, you can see there's the like squirter thing that's sticking down in the middle, and then behind that is the Venturi. So we got to uh, slide all those out. So let's do this. There is a little baby, like eight mil um, bolts on the sides of the car, but I actually think I can get to them better from the other side. Little set screw there. There's two of them. One of them's like bottom middle, the other one's on the side. Once you take both of those out, in theory, they should just slide out. I'm hitting my... I need to take my trumpets off so I can reach. Oh, here we go. This is a choke tube. So, see how thin that one is? It's a 48. There's your direct comparison. Here you go. Side by side action shot of your choke tubes, venturis, whatever you want to say. The smaller one on the left is going to make a bigger change in velocity, and the one on the right is going to make a less change of velocity. So we're going to slide the small one in, and uh, you should be good to go. This is where there's a jet that sticks down. Let's see it. See the jet that sticks down up in there? It lines up on the uh, on that groove. So So basically how you know that you've got those lined up right is the well the, the venturi is easy because it slides over that jet, but the little um, director squirter valve thing, if you Put it in, start the set screw, wiggle it back and forth, and you feel the set screw having locked it down. Tighten the set screw a little bit, wiggle it, tighten it, wiggle it, tighten it, wiggle it, and then you'll be good to go. All right, my dudes, new choke tubes are in. Big choke tubes are out. We're going to uh, have to wait until this afternoon a little bit before I can drive this because it is like 7 in the morning right now, 7.30. And that is because it's usually hot out here during the day. I don't want to get this done before the sun really came up. So, got to run into town in the rotary truck, um, get some wood for some mountain bike jumps, and uh, then when I get back from that, we'll piddle with it. So, we'll see you in a little bit.
Alrighty, fellow friends and people, we are back at the house. Took the truck. Got some more aerodynamics for the truck um, at the Home Depot. You know, that's where all custom body kits come from. So, this stuff here, side note, paint a mural in the basement. So, we're going to hang these, or I'm going to hang these on the wall, and then we're going to paint the mural on these. That way, if I ever do move or something, I can always take my mural with me. So, I'm pretty stoked for that. But, it is now like 9.30ish, and I'm going to fire up the silver car here in a second. I'm gonna eat some breakfast, move the truck, fire that car up. We're gonna do some noise making, because the truck's kinda loud, that's louder. starts with the choke tube change. See how much richer everything is. So you all hear it cutting out at the top end. So I left the big air bleeds in, or the small air bleeds in from the last video, the 130s versus the 160s, which was bringing me down to like 10.0 at wide open throttle with the 48 millimeter chokes. So now with the 42 millimeter chokes, it's bringing it down to below nine. So then what's happening is it's basically like bogging out. It's getting too much fuel. But the transition is a lot better. It still isn't perfect, but it's a lot better. I think it's probably drivable now, like actually consistently drivable. Um, I don't know if necessarily going smaller is gonna fix it. I mean, I made a huge change. I could get 40s, but it's only two, two millimeters smaller. So like here, we're cruising at 3,000 RPM. Like there, it doesn't hesitate in like buck and bog, but there is like a hesitation between my throttle input and then when the main jet's kicking and it takes off. Now, even with my DeLordo on my rotary truck, if you just stab it, it still is like and goes, because it does get a bunch of air. So at least like right there, you can feel the transition in. But I'm gonna go put the 165 or 160 air bleeds in it real quick and go for another test drive. So we'll make sure it pulls all the way through the RPM range. Cause that choke, being smaller is going to restrict air at the top end, so we'll see what we have, see what we get.
like we're pulling a hill and gonna break it. It like barely does it a little bit. But I can at least hold steady throttle. And it transitions in a little bit better. too much on the top end but overall it's not too bad it kind of spit and sputtered there a little bit so I think I may do a different air bleed and see what happens so it's not being super annoying but uh, it's still running a little fat fat but that's arguably better than lean though so I may try to get just a slightly smaller main jet or maybe uh, Put a little bit bigger of an air bleed in it and see how it hangs. But for now, oh, of course, right? Whenever I try to brag on it, it does this little miss thing. But I mean, it's the same thing as trying to fight. Uh, super crazy, you know, built, whatever, whatever, cam, the whole deal, da, 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 engine on the street, so. I feel like we're doing pretty well, but it definitely, like, noticeably with the 42 millimeter chokes, does not pull as hard on the top end as what it did before. Before it raged on the top end, it would squeal into second there it didn't really squeal in a second so who knows we'll see when we get back up to the house we'll make all the neighbors mad <laughs> helped my transition a lot um, I don't know if it's worth trying to get the 40 mils um, I would wonder I don't know, I'm going to do some research and see what people say, if there's like going to be a huge, huge difference between the two. But I will 100% say the caveat to getting that low end transition to work right is that my top end is like not all there as to what it was before. With the 48s and that jet setup and the air bleed setup that I had, that thing ripped on the top end. Like it flat got it. And uh, with this setup, it's kind of, it chokes it out. I mean, that's what the choke tube does. So. Um, for now, we're going to leave it at that. I'm probably going to try to tinker on it a little bit, small ways, but uh, to just get like the perfect, perfect setup going. Um, but I would say arguably it runs just as good as my rotary truck does, which is really good. Starts and everything every time, which is a winner. I still think it's a little fat on the top end, but I may just pull some, pull some fuel out with the main jet or... Uh, like drop down the main jet size maybe. I don't know. They drop down the air bleed because they really only need it like on the top end. Um, I will say that F7 emulsion tube, like I'll have to look at how it's scaled because I feel like although that brings the fuel in sooner, maybe that's taking away from it on the top end. So maybe I'll try the F11 that I have in it again. It just takes a couple minutes to swap it and go for a little test drive. Um, so we'll see. But hope you all enjoyed the video want to uh, thank everyone who's subscribed. We're, we're getting up there, so I'm pretty stoked. And uh, be more fun stuff to come with the Weber car now that she's tuned and we can go rip it and do dumb stuff. So, thanks for watching.